All right, welcome everybody to the Legacy Alliance first ever social media action party. Um, I'm Christina Mon, and I'm really excited for this action party. And I want to um, give a little bit of a background why. So it was really only a few weeks ago that I would look at my Instagram and like basically cringe. I just didn't like it. You know, if anybody else can relate to that, drop a one in the comments. If you're just like, Ugh, I don't, I don't, I don't love it. You know, I'm not, I'm not excited. And what I noticed about that is that I wasn't, I wasn't excited about inviting people to come look at it. I wasn't excited to prospect people on Instagram because I wasn't excited about where they were going to land when they came to check me out. So that is really what has prompted me to, so I made a decision basically in that moment. I was like, okay, I need to learn some of these skills. You know, I always joke, like I'm on the older side of things. And so this didn't come naturally to me. And I've had to like climb the steep learning curve of the digital world <laughs> and that's okay. And I just made that decision. Like I'm going to find some sort of Instagram training that resonates and, and then, and just up my game with this because it's, you know, I just felt like that's where I could put more energy into my business. So lo and behold, not long after that, Sarah's like, Hey, she sends me an email. She's like, you should check out this Instagram training. I'm going to do it. And I checked it out. She did one of those like free two hour, um, workshops to come and like check her vibe out. And I, it literally changed my life. Like in those free two hours, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is everything I've been calling in. And her name is Tori Washington, by the way. And I'm um, a bunch of us ended up buying her course. That's totally how I've chosen to invest in my business. You know, we have hardly any overhead in this business. There's two places where we continue to reinvest in our business. One is personal development, something like this, choosing like, you know what, this is a way, like identifying the areas, the pukas, if you're from Hawaii or understand that language, the, the gaps, the places where, you know what, I feel a little weak in this area. I'm gonna like put intention into studying this and learning more. So that's what I did there. And the other place that we invest um, obviously, we have our minimum order and we're investing in our bodies and our health and our self-care in that way and, and, and in our company. But the other place that we in the past have had to invest the most amount is travel and we don't have that right now. So that's amazing <laughs> for those of us who have been around. And we, if we were just starting out on our journey and money and financial stress was reality, coming up with hundreds of dollars, sometimes you know, a thousand or more to go on trips was a big deal, big deal, squeeze, pressure. Like we had to really um, dig deep for that. So we don't even have that happening right now. So investing in personal development is all the more available to us, all the more reason to, to choose to focus our investments in that place. So I ended up investing in this course and what happened for me in the moment of tuning into this woman, Tori Washington, which by the way, I highly recommend um, getting her course. I'm not going to necessarily regurgitate her downloads here because really what she's all about and what I especially love about our business model and so, so much of where the entrepreneurial world is headed and our whole world is headed is into the, the feminine art of embodiment versus more of like the heady intellectual realm of like figuring stuff out. And so that was the big shift that happened for me in that two hour free course was I went from, and, and drop a two if you can relate to this, I went from my Instagram being a place where I was trying to figure out how to attract people and how to figure out how to do the formula and like do the things and use the methods. I went from that place. And also there's like ego and stuff in there. How do I get liked? How do I please? How do I, you know, be cool? <laughs> right? She actually talks about that. The whole, like, um, you know, like the schoolyard, <laughs> like the whole, 
you know, high school, <laughs> that stuff coming up again to, can totally happen in the social media realm. So I went from social media being that place, which was kind of like, ugh, and how do I show up? And how do I, how do I be vulnerable without spilling too much? And how do I be real? But, you know, all the things. I went from that to just, and what she's, what this woman, Tori Washington, is all about training is just become the channel. Just connect to whatever your source of flow is and let it come through you. And I've always known that, but to hear this professional coach say that was like, for me, just, yes, <laughs> this is what I've always, I've always wanted it to actually be that simple. And in that moment, I just like pulled the cork that was stopping me from just showing up as who I am loved and accepted and enough and embodied. And I just became that in that moment, which was so liberating. Honestly, my business and my life, all kinds of like things I've been passing through were feeling, had been re feeling really heavy. And by the way, I'm on the farm and there's construction happening here. Our house is being renovated. So I apologize for the power tools in advance. And I'll also segue in that moment to just let you know that this is an action party. So it's actually not going to be about me talking the whole time. I'm just opening it up and kind of explaining why I got super excited to have social media action parties, not because I'm the expert, but because I had a big shift myself. And from that day um, that, that that kind of breakthrough happened, I started getting so excited about my social media and I would do it when I was inspired. And so she, she talks about that. Let it be inspired. You don't have to wait for those like perfect algorithm timings. You don't have to, you know, sit there and craft the manuscript, right? Like I have to tell my story. It has to be everything. Drop it to if you've really, if you've ever been there where you're like, I have to get it all in and it has to be packaged in such a way that everybody likes it. And, you know, we try so hard and, you know, Tori Washington goes into these different um, content creatrixes and they have sort of the wounded uh, version and the um, embodied integrated version. And so mine is the perfectionist and then the embodied, you know, when you get through that and you break through, you're the guide. And, and I was just like, yep, totally, absolutely resonating with that. And so, yeah, so there's perfectionist stuff to overcome. I think it might be the most common one or it's the second most common one. Um, so anyhow, getting to that place where you can just become embodied, connected, and then let it come through is so fun. It is so juicy. And this is where, this is what we do anyway, right? We talk about if you're attracting brand partners and you're growing your business and you're leading with the business, all that means is you're leading with your why. You are painting, we are painting a picture on our social media of the world that we want to see created collectively, individually. This is the life that I am committed to creating for myself. And I'm going to keep showing you what that looks like. I'm going to keep showing myself what that looks like over and over and over every single day. I'm manifesting it by projecting it out there. And I'm attracting people who are like, I want that life too. What is she doing? I need to tune into that. I'm, they're leaning in, they're getting curious. And we're forming bonds with people along those lines of, we're doing this together. So I'm not here to train. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you how I came up with this idea or how this, you know, what this idea wants to come through. And I will say too, just because um, we have a, quite a few people here, um, this is the beginning of, for those of you who are like, what's going on with Legacy Alliance and we're on a new team thread and all that. Um, this is my first time in my whole almost four year career of having a team name and having a team thread, which is really exciting. And it's just kind of, it's the time. It was just a ripening moment and it just came to fruition now. So. 
Legacy Alliance is our team. And it really, that name was born of the idea that we are all creating legacies, something bigger than ourselves, something bigger than this generation, something bigger than, you know, just the legacy, something that's going to live beyond when these bodies are done. And what do we want that to be? And actually, I'll just say, Tori Washington talks about how our Instagrams are a legacy that she has people that she follows who have passed on and they have left a mark. They've left an imprint. They've left a story. They've left a message for the world to see, you know, beyond this life. And that's amazing. And so I just, I think it's, you know, everybody that I really admire is living that guidance every day of what choices am I making? What impact does that have on the legacy I'm leaving? What gifts am I leaving here? What memories am I creating for others of who I am and what I've, what I've offered? So we have that same thing in this amazing platform, <laughs> which is, you know, all the things it is, but it is an amazing platform. So here we go. So let's get, let's get started. And we're going to, um, so back to the power tools, this, I want this to be like, um, a, uh, collaborative process. So I'd love to have voices chime in, leaders chime in, rising leaders chime in, curious people chime in, brand new people chime in. This is something we can um, co-create together. And um, that way, if the power tool gets too crazy, I'll just bow out and somebody else can chime in. So the structure of this hour, and you know, now it's 45 minutes, but the structure of this time is it's gonna be split in two. The first part, we are going to create a story. And when I mean, when I say story, I mean two things. One is we're going to create um, a series of story slides and, or a post. I, you know, I really want to leave this open because again, it's all about being inspired. So I can't just tell you just exactly what to do, but I'm going to give prompts. That way, if that's helpful to you, you can use them. If you're just like, I'm inspired, like I'm gonna do my thing and I'm excited to be in the container of people doing it, great, awesome. And there's people who couldn't be here but they were inspired by the fact that we're doing this and have already gotten into action creating stories. And so this, and there's people watching this recording. So we're all in this together. So the first half is creating um, a series of story slides, maybe like minimum five, as many as you want. And you can, you can share two, um, I mean, you can share whatever you want, but one idea is to create the story slide of my story. And you've heard Sarah talk about this. You heard me talk about this. I'm working on creating my highlight called my story, but right here, we're just going to play. We're just going to have, it's a play shop. We're just going to have fun. We're not going to worry about it being the ultimate highlight. This is just a way to get out there and practice telling our story. So for those of you who are on the Leslie Zan call on Tuesday, she went over like a basic format that we tell our story. And this is our why story. This is our business forward story. This is our life story. Not necessarily our product testimonial story, which, you know, you can tell that too. But this, in this one, we're going to create a, a minimum five slide version of my story. And so here, and you can take notes, or maybe somebody can type in the chat the five um, elements to the, to the story format. And so what you'll do is you'll take a slide for each one. So actually, let's just go ahead and do the first one together. Let's not even do all five. Well, I'll, I'll give you all five, and then we'll break it down and do one at a time. So, and, and also, if you're inspired and you just are like, I'm going to do, do a series of slides on you know, how I recreate during COVID or like being an empowered woman in my marriage or divorce, whatever, whatever you're inspired about, about, go with it. But if these prompts help you, this is what um, came through on my swim in the ocean today. <laughs> That's how I got embodied. So, um, okay. So first part of our story, 
what my what I do, what my life is, what I'm doing, what I and um, what what either what I was doing kind of before PRM or what I do. So it can be your job, it can be stay at home mom, it can be sort of that title, you know, whatever it is that you want to say you do, you spend your time, you're supporting yourself by that kind of thing. So that's part one, like what I do or did. So somebody might want to type that. Um, part two, what, sorry, what I love about it. So, and, and I'm not going to do a full training on how to tell the story. So I'm hoping most of you are on Leslie Zan or this is just landing well, but what I love about it. So for me, I was a stay at home mom. What I loved about it, I got to be with my kids all day. I had the freedom to spend my time however I wanted to. Part three, what was challenging or what is challenging about it? What I didn't love, what I don't love about it. So, um, oh, look at Morgan's in there. Got a whole like write up already. Um, so for me, what I didn't love about it, I didn't love that my husband was gone all the time and that I was holding it up by myself. <laughs> I didn't love like not seeing grownups very often <laughs> other than like some of my mom friends. Um, I didn't love asking my money, my husband for money. I did not love that. So these are just ideas of how to tell your story. And then the next part is why Perium has been a solution or why your business is a solution. So how, you know, finding an income stream that I could grow at home while I had two babies at home has been a solution for me. How being part of a community of, of people who uplift each other, who, who dig deep and work through generational trauma so that we can find our gifts has been one of the most empowering parts of my life. And I've, I've created a life where we have the freedom to do what we want still, and we're financially supported to not have like marital stress because <laughs> finances are so tight. I'm just kind of like giving you some ideas of my story. So why the solution? And then the last part is, and the fifth part. So that was four part, five parts. The fifth part is, um, what's your outlook on your life now? Okay. So um, I'll try to type that in the comments as we go, but we're going to dive in right now. And you're going to find a picture that talks about what you do or what you did. You might have something in your camera roll that you can whip out. And if you don't, if you don't have like that exact picture, like I'm right now thinking of this great picture of me and my husband and our first baby and we're like here on the farm and we're looking what people are always like, is this like from the seventies? <laughs> like just so rootsy and, um, you know, live in the farm life, live in the hippie farm life. Um, but also pretty, um, limited in our resources at the time <laughs> other than earth resources. So it could be a picture of you. It could be something off the internet that describes what you do. Maybe it's talking about being a server in a restaurant. Maybe it's, you know, being on welfare, whatever it is, like finding a picture. If you don't have the exact picture you want, you can just put a pretty picture and just type the words, you know? So these are how slides work. So let's all just drop in and find our first slide and um, create that story. And I just wanted to, to make one more comment. If you're not somebody who is yet on social media sharing your story, thank you for coming to this call. And um, I just wanna support you to lean into the uncomfortable and just be curious and see what's there. Hey, Christina, 
Are we um, just getting, were we doing a story on Instagram? Is that where we're starting? So we're creating our first slide on Instagram. So what I do when I create my stories is I do them all on Instagram and I have my Facebook and Instagram linked. So it just automatically goes to Facebook. Some people are only working on Instagram. Okay. So it's just however you're working. And, and right now, it's, okay, so it's, it's in the story reel. It's in the stories and you can either, it's the story reel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're creating story slides and sorry. <laughs> I just want to say too. Okay. Um, you can either save the story slide into your camera roll and then upload it when you feel ready. Or, and that way you, maybe you feel more freedom to play right now without it being like <gasps> the final cut. Um, or maybe you're ready to just go for it. So I just, either way. Um, and if people have questions specifically, like if this is all brand new to you, um, maybe like private message me so that people can focus. And you definitely recommend having a photo of ourself. Um, not necessarily. You can use, there's all different ways we can tell, like, what did your, what is your life or what was your life? Yeah, you, you can just get creative with that. I think in general, photos of you, whether it's in stories and what, or on your wall is something you want to have, but not all the time. So it's nice to mix it up. I like to put a lot of nature photos and then photos of me and art. Those are kind of the three things that I cycle through.
Okay. Who got a slide made and wants to share what the process was like, what you did? Um, I use the app Canva, um, which is like ridiculously helpful and I highly recommend it to everybody. Um, and I just, it has like the option you can like just find, uh, you can just, they have like templates and they have templates specifically for Instagram stories. So I did that and then I typed in nature. So it brought up a template that had like a naturey background. Um, and then I literally just put a text box in bold that said my story. And then I did a smaller text box and I wrote like a little bit about, I guess, like what the last few years of my life have been kind of consisting of, which I'm happy to share if that is helpful for anybody. Yeah, that would be great. You fit all that in one slide. Um, well, I said, I said my story I left home four years ago on a mission to discover myself and my purpose. I went from being a professional makeup artist who was so afraid she would go, go her whole life without actually living to being a farm girl covered in dirt and showering every three days. I went from living in a city where you were lucky if you could see the stars at night through the pollution to living in the mountains and jungles of the Pacific. I don't know if that's like really hitting the mark and that, yeah, I mean, if that's like what you were doing before, and then you're going to get into what you loved about it, and then what you didn't love about it, right? Those would be the next mm -hmm. slides. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, I love that it's personal, you know, and one of the reasons that I'm excited, especially some of the newer people here to see is that often when people, sorry, often when people start their businesses, they think, they need to be talking about Perium or network marketing or, you know, but it's really all about us. It's our story. That is what people are going to be moved by. So I love the, I love how personal it is and I can't wait to see it. So thank you, Morgan, for sharing. Does anybody else want to share their process? How, how it was for you, what you've created, how it feels? I'll go. Um, so I feel like I talk about Perium a lot on my stories and I don't want to annoy people, I guess, with the same story over and over. So it was hard for me to like get the courage to do it right now because yesterday I was posting a lot about it too. So um, I just started going through my pictures and like thinking about um what kind of pictures would talk about the life that i had and what i'm doing now and what i you know i was thinking about how a picture could explain what i was doing because i was basically like being in school and being poor and working in restaurants so i was i was kind of thinking through like what kind of picture would bring that to the surface because one of the things I've been finding in my stories is that I'm having a lot of words, a lot of text. And so I don't think that that necessarily is good. I think visuals speak more. So that was kind of my process of thinking through how I want to, how I want to do this today. So what just came to me is if you have, if you happen to have any pictures of you waitressing or serving, and you just did a slide of that and, and even wrote like anybody else's higher education look like this. <laughs> that's true. That's good. You know idea. what I mean? Like that's the story is like yeah. the, the, you know, I could go on and on about college loans and the reality and what's also, you know, I could, there's a, there's, that's the idea, right? It's the classic, a picture is worth a thousand words, mm -hmm. but 
you know, and like meme culture is so big for a reason. Like it lands potent when it's just that image with like just a few words. So we can kind of go with that in this, these slides. So, um, so I just, I'll share mine too, cause I had just said what I was going to do. And then of course I got into inspiration mode and something completely different came through. So here's my slide. Let's see if you can see that. So I ended up finding this art recently because I was searching um, like heaven on earth kind of images. So I have like the celestial realm and like the earth realm and it's like the, the, the masculine and the feminine. So I decided that's what I'm going to bring. That's going to be my first slide because that is the part that is, that's what I've always been committed to is like creating heaven on earth. But I don't necessarily need to be so explicit too. That's the thing. We don't always have to tell our explicit story. We don't always have to be literal. So what came through is I just wrote in my favorite font, the like light fairy cursive one I wrote up here, heaven on earth. Literally, that's it. That's my number one. What have you been doing? <laughs> heaven on earth. <laughs> So that's what's so cool about these stories, because you can talk about your journey every single day without it annoying people if you're getting non-literal, if you're getting embodied, if you're getting inspired, if you're getting creative. You know, most people aren't going to be like, oh, that's her Perium journey, but it is for me because I was looking for a way to fund our farm <laughs> and I found it through Perium. And that'll come out, that comes out, that part of my story comes out time and again, but I weave it, it's all weaving. Yes, Kalein O'Hea is adding here, using non-literal is my favorite way to share what I do. Getting all eth ethereal and metaphorical, I feel really touches people. And I just wanna like <laughs> give a shout out to this woman who seriously has inspired my Instagram in a major way, even to the font. I know you use that font too. And I'm like, um, yeah, I don't know. I think I was using it before I saw you using it, but who knows? <laughs> um, I would highly recommend checking out Ayala Mama. Maybe you can type your um, IG because we're, yeah. This woman has got it down. Yeah. See, even multiple people here follow Ayala Mama. Really, really inspiring. And, and she's doing an amazing thing in her doTERRA business over there. Um, but we can all learn from this way of storytelling, of uplifting, of embodying our prayers in visual and, and word. Um, so this is, this is the art form. This is what we can get really excited about instead of it feeling like a chore. If it feels like a chore, put it down and go get, go like get in the forest or the ocean or the garden. <laughs> like that's not where it's going to come from, where it works, where it feels, where like when Laura, when you're like, oh, people are going to be annoyed. They will not feel annoyed when it when you're inspired, when you're really connected to the source of your creative flow. And that's what I'm hoping the consistency of these actions parties really help us cultivate together. Yes, please share something. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you for having me. Truly, this is, you know, Christina, you're such an inspiration and um I'm just really grateful to, to be in the energy of this. I actually took my camera off because I'm like, I'm going to do some things on my, on my story. And I just, I just want to echo, um, you know, everything that you're speaking to around, um, like really finding your, your essence, your drive, your magic, like that energy that's like fueling your business and like connecting into that power source and creating from there when you are telling your story on Instagram and like that to me is everything like I, I mean I talk about my story as it's like almost like a therapeutic action for me because when I sit down it, it, it's become almost like a journal where I I just tune into like what is what do I want to feed the collective consciousness right now and maybe that's through the doTERRA business that I'm building maybe it's through 
like how I'm raising my kids or like dealing with the mess in my house and like all of that becomes this woven prayer. And what I've found, um, you know, cause I've been doing this for several years and I just want to share, you know, what I've found is that that weaving of all parts of myself into the story has been the true magic because people tune into that. They, they're like, Oh, I see myself. I see myself in that mess. I see myself in the overwhelm. I see myself in, in the solution, you know, and we're just like, we're all of us, right? Cause we're all, we're all offering solutions to the collective, right? And we're all, I mean, every single entrepreneurial business, I think is, is a gift, right? To the collective is a living prayer of how can I serve and help and uplift, provide freedom, right? It's an emotional freedom. And um, yeah, and so I just, I really feel like that comes so clear, just like what you said, Christina, when you are completely anchored in to your life force. And one of, one of my tips is I will do like a total dance party, like put on my favorite music. Like if I'm in a funk, but I know like I'm posting about our convention, like I need to get this out today. It's like the last day to register. <laughs> And if I'm feeling funky, like I will stop everything and I will just like shake my body. And like, Christina, you just said, like become embodied, right? Like that's what we're moving into, like within business, within life is like this embodied way of living. Um, and to bring that through our stories and our Instagrams and, you know, whatever social media outlet you're using, um, you know, it just, it's so much more than business. It's, it really is a service so anyway thank you for letting me ramble <laughs> thank you so much for being here it's such an honor to have you kaleno here is a newer member of our ohana here and a dear sister that we've been weaving together for years and more so lately and i'm just so excited that you know that we're even in a business model where we can just uplift each other's businesses each other's plant medicines each other's communities each other's people who are praying for this and yet there's so many layers to get through so we need each other to feel that life force helping each other and yeah so thanks for taking the time to share i just got some really sweet video clips of you sharing that i'll be <laughs> <laughs> putting in my stories and tagging to be shared. <laughs> so that's another really fun tool. If like you see somebody coming on a mastermind and you're like, I'm loving this. If you have it on camera, if you have it on computer and you can get out your camera and take a little video clip, that's so golden to share these voices. Because just like Colleen Otea said, yes, it's a business and yes, we're making money. But like the bigger picture is these embodied entrepreneurs who are opening our voices, we are the ones who collectively are transforming this world through this movement disguised as business. That's really what's happening. And so we can each activate that within our, our platforms here. And I just want to read, um, going back to the Tory Washington training, that um, I was telling you a little bit about how my thing is um, the perfectionist. And so she creates mantras for each of the types. And my mantra, which has really gotten me through some moments lately, part of it is this is my, this is the prayer before getting on Instagram for my type. So anybody else who can relate to the perfectionist, which probably all of us have some of that. Instagram is an altar where I share truth and wisdom daily. So like feel that Instagram is an altar. If anybody here has had that like ugh, social media resistance, like I came in with that to transmute that into it's my altar. That is so powerful. And I even put that, you know, we're all posting our action plans. By the way, type of five, if you've got your action plan posted, I just want to like big you up and big yourself up for that because that is like step one of, of our ritual of, of our monthly goals. Um, so type of five, if you got that up. In my, action, in my business plan, my action plan, I put my business is my altar. 
And I got that from this. <laughs> so Instagram is an altar where I share truth and wisdom daily. And she says, God, but you know, fill in whatever essence you choose. May you use me as a conduit of guidance and clarity for those who could use it the most. I now allow myself to take the next step in complete knowing that I am enough. So that's, that's my mantra. <laughs> and anybody's welcome to use that too. So, um, so we can keep working with these slides or it can be become homework um, that we continue to play with. And what I wanna do is open it up to see if there's any other questions about the assignment or how to, how to create this story. Um, and, and I guess I'm, I'm sort of like, I'm on the fence about whether to stay with this and let everybody have a complete, you know, complete slides here or to go into the other piece that I was going to do. So I think what I'll do instead is just kind of like feel the field by letting um, anybody, if they have questions, if what, well, actually, why don't you guys let me know? How's the slide assignment working for you? Is it feeling like it's happening for you right now? Some people are like, I need to be alone and total quiet and like in the zone, get in the zone, not on a Zoom, which I totally get. This is all experimental. <laughs> um, so Morgan's into the idea of completion. Okay, great. Let's stay with it. And I will give the other piece of it as an assignment at the end for you to do on your own. Um, okay, great. And Alexis too loves the container. Beautiful. That's my, that's my perfectionist. Like, ah, I can't get it perfect. Can I run away? Um, okay, great. Let's stay with it. So part two is what do you love about it? So now I'm going to make my next slide of what do I love about being part of creating heaven on earth? And again, if anybody has questions, feel free. Otherwise, I'm just going to go into work mode here. All right, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So I'm... I um what I'm feeling most lit up about right now is is Naya, my daughter. Mm -hmm. And like and so I'm just feeling like making a story about her and the amazing being that she is and about like I have this quote about how we speak to our children and how like into who they're becoming. And in some ways it doesn't really feel like that period related, but she is a lot of my why also. Um, but like that's like what's lighting me up so much every day is like just watching her be who she is and how she lights up everyone around her and connects with every single aspect of life in this beautiful way. So I um, guess I'm curious like if I'm, if I'm, because like sometimes it feels like a reach to make it about something that feels like and I know you're saying like it's about our whole life um but I th I think there's like I, that's just something I struggle with is like how to weave in kind of like weave in the perium or is it like I just am making more social media content because I don't actually make that much social media content period <laughs> so almost just making a story for me about anything is like practice I personally, I don't know if you have any feedback or suggestions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would stay with the, what lights you up. I would just follow that vein. If it's lighting you up to make that story thread, um, you don't have to going back to the literal versus non-literal. You don't have to explicitly link it to Perium every post that would actually get to be a turnoff. And the, the, um, the the story that you're painting and you have been painting is that you're so often with your daughter 
anybody who's like in a nine to five is looking at that and being like, dang, she spends a lot of time appreciating her daughter and all the subtleties and all of this expression of her soul and being there for all these moments of change. That's that to me is um, clear without having to spell it out. So if it lights you up to just do that story slide of just that, it doesn't have to explicitly. Yeah. Does that make sense, Leah? Is that helpful? I went back on mute. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. My reception's super spotty. Okay, my reception's really spotty. Um, like, I guess the question is like, should I on one of those slides say like, I'm so grateful I get to have so much time with her wherever we go or like something that speaks to the, like the location and time period. Does it light you up to say that? Yeah, I am so grateful. Okay. That I get to be with her. So <laughs> and it's a process okay. too. You can ask yourself when you get to that slide, if you're lit up, but still, <laughs> you know, and that's the creative process is just to be like, am I still lit up? Am I, what, what would light me up? What direction do I want to go now? And let it be guided from that place of joy. And, and, oh, you know, while we're at it, since Leah, you're totally like, have a lot of that perfectionist too, like me. <laughs> and we're like actively dismantling the patriarchy of like stuck, heady thinking right now. Um, let me add, let me read to you the other part. That was the prayer for my type, but there's a mantra too. Here it is. I can't fuck up the wisdom of my soul's deepest truth. It is safe to begin. Can't fuck it up. It's your daughter. <laughs> you can't go wrong. Love you. Love you. Thank you. By the way, it does not have to be one slide per 
one of the five, if you're doing the story format, it, it can be multiple slides for one of the things. Hopefully that was clear. I'm doing what I love and it's a lot of slides. <laughs>
All right. Well, it is the top of the hour. I would say if you're in a flow and you want to keep working, feel free to stay and keep creating. Feel free to go check out my story. It, um, it has the five parts, although it's very non-literal. <laughs> so you can, you can decode it knowing the five parts and, and just know that we are sharing our stories layers upon layers in so many different ways when we can tap into this creative um my instagram is just christina mon it's a very uncreative name <laughs> i've many times thought about calling it kihalani rising which is the land that i'm at here this is our this is our why creating you know heaven on earth here at kihalani so we'll see if i I think that's happening, <laughs> but for now it's Christina Amon. So we can keep doing this. And, you know, I'm so glad you said that, Laura, about being afraid of annoying people because network marketing not done correctly does annoy people. <laughs> that's the whole reason it gets a bad name. And we can be uplifting people and feeding their souls and creating content that really uplifts and fills, you know, something that people are hungry for. So get connected, get embodied, get inspired, get juiced up, stay in the joy and have fun with it. Um, I want to open it up for any last questions and then just let people move on to their days. Oh yeah, I am going to give the, the assignment, which people can do uh, on your own at home. The assignment is to find five to 10 hashtags that you love. And I want you to go in and search. Let's just start with five. Let's keep it simple. Find five hashtags that you just like, you know, and it might be like something you're into permaculture or, you know, mothering or whatever, whatever you're into booty yoga. And then you go in and you search that hashtag. You don't have to follow it. You can, if you want to, but the first step is, and this is a prospecting tip. This is like, the quickest way to have fun prospecting is to do this for me. <laughs> so find a hashtag you like, go search it. And then, um, and then it's going to pull up all these posts of people who are using that hashtag. And inevitably there's going to be some posts that you love. And so I want you to go in there and give that post love, like get, like find somebody that you want to start a relationship with and start five relationships through hashtags. Again, you don't have to follow the hashtag, you're just searching, you can follow. And you're just gonna like, you're gonna comment on their post, you're gonna like their post, and you're gonna start a private message, just appreciating them, tell them why it touched you. Okay? So this is the joy of prospecting through social media. <laughs> You can just have fun. Go turn on the hose of gratitude and appreciation and compliments and just go blast it on people. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It definitely helps get us out of the way of like the whole head trip of prospecting. Okay, so any final questions before I close this out? How's my reception been? I don't know if my reception isn't necessarily totally solid here on the farm. I'm curious though. It's been pretty good. Awesome, cool. Thank you so much for holding this space. Oh, thanks for coming. I'm super excited to co-create here. This brings me a lot of joy, creating, getting creative, more than training actually. <laughs> Turning it into something. All right, cool. Well, have a beautiful day, everyone. Remember to go get connected to that which brings you joy, like sipping nectar from a flower and fill your cup before you go out there and share. Love you all. Thanks for coming. Aloha. Thank you so much.